What's going on, everybody? Uh, today, I thought I'd talk about a little bit about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent of the game. A lot of friends have asked me to, to kind of give my thoughts that I've given them on my opinion on things, the state of the game, and so forth. So let's hop right into it. First thing I think we need to talk about is the lobby problems. I've heard a lot of people discuss, what is the issue with the lobby? Well, it's the backfill, it's the timer, it's this and that. Well, the simple fact is, on a lot of the lobbies, it, without question, there are more victim players than there are family players. And this would go into uh, another issue coming up, but that is one of the major issues, is the lobby, the way the matchmaking works is horrible. So why do people back out of lobbies? I think that, I think people back out for a number of reasons. Uh, I play both sides of the game. My opinion is that if you're playing family side, it's really, it's really, really hard to play casually at this point. You could try with friends, uh, but this definitely is not the casual game that that uh, Gun has has intended for it to be. So with the matchmaking, you get you know you might be a level ninety nine, which obviously you can't see, but your characters are level ten most likely with maxed out perks, and then all of a sudden you get a level zero with you, and then a level five, and then you look at the victim side, and you know they might be all level tens. Well, you're going to be at a supreme disadvantage, especially in solo queue is where I see this most happen, and I think that's why a lot of people will back out. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, the Duncan Danny problem uh, definitely was an issue for two over two months that we had a broken character in this game. And I think to this day, sometimes people still back out when they see that. Uh, especially on solo queue. Solo queue is, it can be really awful on this game. Maybe nine out of ten times you got uh, people using comms. And in, as family, you absolutely need comms to be a lot more successful. You know, like I said, most of the time, if you're in solo queue, your teammates aren't saying anything. And that does go on both ends of it. But family definitely needs more coordination, I believe, than solo queue victims do. So the so when people say that the you know well the family's overpowered or the victim's overpowered, well, I think the obvious answer is <laughs> more people are playing victims than family, and there's there's a there's a reason for that. There's a, well there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, solo queue family isn't that fun. It's not that fun all the time. You'll lose players that way. They'll go hop to victims because, well, that's a lot, you know, it seems to be a lot easier. Um, victims, it could be tough to play a victim as well, but you need a lot more coordination and you're almost forced to be, you know, what's that word? I hate using these terms, but sweaty. You're for, almost forced to be sweaty as a family member if you want to really be successful in a lot of matches. Unless you're partied up, then it's a lot different. So I think the matchmaking is definitely something they need to fix. I don't know why at the beginning when you log into the game, you just can't choose your character from that start screen of who you wish to play and it puts you in a lineup for that and just puts you in a match. Therefore, everybody's playing who they want to play and you're with the appropriate levels. Um, I get it because that also sucks for new people who start the game and they, they get into a lobby and... The people who've stuck around with this game and have leveled up back out because they don't want to work with a level zero unless it's their friend or whatever, you know. Uh, it's it's understandable both ways. It's 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 unfortunate because it's hard to retain new people that way because they're like, well, pff, this sucks. Why am I playing this, right? So I believe that's one of the huge problems. And I think a, a, a one of the other problems that could be, I mean, I know I've personally done this when I go into a lobby and I hear a bunch of people uh, saying not so nice things, stuff that, you know, people shouldn't be saying. I'm not even going to say the words, but I'm sure people understand what I'm talking about. I don't want to play with those people. I leave. Uh, they could sit in the lobby forever for all I care. Uh but, you know, 
one thing one thing about these games is they do they do breed what you know what we call toxic behavior and you see it in the lobbies and i've seen it on both ends and i'm not trying to get down on the victims really but the majority of it i hear is from the victim side of things i why that is i don't know it just is so the developers gun whichever you want to call them cuz you know we have people who like to apologize for everybody but you know the blame starts at the top it doesn't start at the very bottom unfortunately uh they've done a lot of good a lot of bad but these lobbies they've taken away timers they've made it you know to where you didn't need three family members you could only you could start the game with six people or i think it was five at one point i'm not sure they've done this and that and the lobby timer's still there you just don't see it so you can still get timed out of a lobby uh, I think if they if they fix this matchmaking and fix the you know they'd have to fix the whole perk system because one reason people want to play certain characters to level up certain perks you know or their ability they need to make that an easier way because it's it's a hell of a grind and that also goes in the solo queue whereas you're getting you know you're playing hitchhiker or even a Johnny. And the victims rush out. You haven't got anything set up. They escape, and you maybe got fifty points. I've seen it. I've seen fifty point family family characters, and then on the other end, victims too. So look at victim, and you know you're on there against a squad, a full squad of family, and they wipe you out before you even out of the basement. And you know you're lucky if you have a hundred points, right? That's that's not really fun. That that's not really. Uh, it, it's going to be hard to retain people. I think that way. So yeah, we the lobbies need to be fixed. Fix the matchmaking. I think that would be a a big a big step. Um, the whole balance thing that's going to be a constant argument. But obviously, all I'll say is there's far fewer family players than there are victim. That should be your answer where the balance probably lies. Okay, so then we're going to get into the, the game balance, the persistent bugs that they keep saying are fixed but remain, and perks. Now, some bugs aren't game-breaking, uh, but they can be annoying when it's been stated they've been fixed, such as log in, you know, loading in as a family member and you're spectating yourself, uh, getting stuck on certain objects still. There's uh, wall gaps that you literally get stuck in and can't move or how about how about the door slam bug or more importantly on top of that the leland barge that completely can remove a family member from the game because they get soft locked into stun mode and can't do anything that one's been here since the game came out and with the last patch that they did it only seemed to have gotten worse uh, Leatherface stalling bug issue. Now, granted, if you're good enough, you, you can avoid it, but there's some times where you still do the right things, and it seems it happens anyways. Uh, you know, there, there's there's also, there's also bugs on the victim's end, too, where they get, you know, they're, they're trying to leave through a gap, and they end up grabbing a health bottle instead because that's just the, the game thinks that's what you're doing, and that's not what you're doing. There, You know, so there's things like that. Uh the, the Danny problem that, that persisted for over two months, I think, really did hurt the game. It hurt a lot of the player base, in my opinion, to where they just got fed up and don't play. Or they dodge, or they all became victims. I don't know. Uh, so uh, there are problems with, with characters as well. Like, when they fix something, you know, in a lot of games, when, when they fix something, then it seems like something else breaks. And the thing in here is they, they don't, they don't always seem to listen to their to their player base about certain bugs, like uh, the grappling, for example. They changed the grappling. Now it's chip damage, and now you know with this goes into the broken perks. There's perks that are just crazy in this game. Uh, I've done it as a victim where I've got grappler or empowered, and I can just grapple the family pretty much over and over. Yes, they can get suffocating grip, but if you have like grappler and empowered, it usually doesn't suffocating grip usually won't help them. And 
it's not scary when you basically have victims hunting down the family to grapple them and stuff like that. <laughs> That's supposed to be kind of like a last resort thing. That was the intention of it. It certainly isn't that anymore. Uh, so just, just the way the perks work, fast hands, the way proficiency works, like as a victim, I mean, I can, I can melt through locks with Julie or Connie. I don't, I never have bought Danny. I won't, I won't, I have no interest in buying Danny. Uh, I don't want to be a part of the problem, even though it's there to play. So the way the perk system works is you're almost basically, if you want to succeed in the game, especially you know as family or even as victims, obviously, but yeah, you basically, you have to run the meta builds. If you're trying to be casual, have fun, and trying to run perks that, you know, really are kind of useless on a sense, like confusing mechanic uh, is a pretty useless perk. Uh, the Leatherface ones, like bring home the bacon and things like that, very, very useless, very niche. It's rarely going to happen. Uh, if I'm wrong, please feel free to comment below and, you know, let me know, show a video about it. I'd love, to, I'd love to see some of these perks in action and, you know, them help and turn the tide in a match for family or victim. So that that is a big part of the problem, and people have often criticized their quality assurance or their testing team. The thing is, I don't think their testing team, I'm sure they have a small one, but I don't think they play the way that players on this game play. Um, you know, things just seem to slip through the through the cracks on this game. For example, we, we, we saw Danny... It, every when he's getting put on the meat hook, if so, someone's not playing him, we've seen his new cosmetics since he came out, and now they want you to buy them. I just think that's very strange. Like, how does that make it through? Um, <laughs> there's just a lot. Like, how did Danny, a, as he was, make it through in the first place, the first time around? You know, how did uh, I mean, people want to complain about Johnny, that Johnny's overpowered when he would seem to gain speed when he lunged and all that with his swing. But somehow that made it through forever. Then they nerfed it after they, and the nerf was so bad, Johnny was useless. But within a week they fixed that, but we can't get, we can't fix a stun barge. I, I don't know. So I just questioned, you know, if they really have a play test team for this game. Moving forward, I think they, I think they really, they really need to test these things before they come out. You know, we've had like, I don't know, I think the last big patch was like 250 fixes. Before that, it was like, I want to say 350. It was some crazy number. And, you know, I, I maybe think a handful of those fixes probably actually happened. And some of them were just stuff we didn't need to know, like, the glare on Nancy's glasses or something like that. Like, uh, who cares really about that? Um, <laughs> so there's just certain fixes that really, they weren't game-breaking things. Some of them were, and some of them, you know, some things still persist. Um, yeah, but the, the perk meta, it's, 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 it, it's daunting because that you really it, to be successful. That's what you're, you're kind of really forced to do. And they claim this was a casual game and more like a party game. It is not. It's a. It is not that. I think in private matches you could certainly have that, but in solo queue and just party, you know, partying up on either, you know, a victim party or a family party and just going out and playing the game. It's really not. It's really not casual. Like like they described it okay another thing that people I, I hear people talk about a lot is the lack of content in the game that's very true like as you level up your account level to 99 uh really all you unlock is uh you unlock a, a bunch of uh, pictures that a, a good majority of them you can find right on the internet uh the only cosmetics that you unlock initially are for leatherface after you like once you play Leatherface, I think it's twenty times you have his base three outfits, and with the victims, I think you gotta play them up to five times, and then you have their non their their free cosmetics unlocked. 
that really isn't much of anything. There's no characters, there's no different modes, there's... Uh, they, they've they talked about increasing the level cap for, I don't know, probably... I think the first time I heard about it was back in September or October. Still hasn't happened, and I don't think it will happen till after August. Uh, the the time between map releases and and new characters it's 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 quite a gap between a lot of that the lack of family cosmetics for like cook hitchhiker nancy uh we got a free one with sissy and johnny but nothing else with that uh it's it's really lacking that way they, they you know we have weapon cosmetics but really the only ones you can really tell is the cooks <laughs> with this with the broomstick can't really see the other ones too much when when you're using them. Maybe Nancy's a bit, you can, but that's it. Uh, and that's the other thing with content. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people, I, I know probably a majority of people who play the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game aren't diehard fans of the movie. They might not even know a lot about it. It's just a game to play. And I get it, and that's that's fine. But there are a lot of horror fans and diehard fans of the movie, such as myself. And really, when I see these made-up characters start to outnumber the actual franchise characters, I, I don't like that. Uh, and I get it if they, you know, they're trying to assume the rights and so forth. I, I kind of understand that. And then they've locked themselves into this April of 1973 day, we, you know, and if we are going to get beyond that, I don't think it'll be till after August. Um, I'm hoping we see some franchise content. Uh, I don't, you know, I can't say I'm. I, I can't say I will, I will never buy another family member that's fabricated. Uh, right now, I don't intend to. I would. I. I really want to see a franchise character. Now, granted, I don't think it's. I don't think it's solely important for the victims since they're not using the original victims in the movie. Which I think that'd be cool if they did. I don't think people would care if it's not the exact same story on that day for those victims, but I think that would be neat. You could have Franklin almost be like the grandpa for the victims, right? They bring Franklin barbecue or something, and he can he can help empower the victims. Uh, I think that'd be kind of cool, you know. Give give it two sides of that. So I think I I think moving forward though I I think they're going to need to go that route. They're going to need to release things. Their price points are are not that great, and I know a lot of people have talked about Dead by Daylight, where you can get a franchise character for like six bucks or something like that, and they're making up a character for you for ten bucks. And you know the game itself when it came out was forty dollars. So by the time you buy like the game. For example, the game, Danny, and his cosmetics, you know, that's already half the price of the game right there. Just just for one character. I you know, pre, you know, I, I just I just find that I just find that very very strange. Uh their price points for this. I think if it even if it was franchise characters, that probably still is a bit high. Um, but I don't I think people would mind less, especially fans. Now there are people like there are content creators who say it's all high and all this and that, but they'll buy it anyways. And I get it, I understand it because they want they have to showcase stuff. Um, but people got to stop apologizing for a lot of, for a lot of the things that have gone on here. Like I've heard, you know, I just want to see the game succeed. The game has succeeded. <laughs> it made it made it made the company probably a lot of money when it first came out. It's like something like four million sold or something like that. Four million played. I can't something like that. It's made money. It, it has succeeded. The question is, can it continue su to succeed? Well, the numbers on Steam and even on Xbox and PlayStation, where it's not even top in the top fifty or one hundred, you know, and on on Steam Play, it's hovering. But you know, depending when content comes out, it's hovering between like seven hundred and five hundred players at any one time. That is a steep, steep decline. Can it come back? Of course it can come back. And I, I hope it does. I, I do want to see this game actually survive. Can can the game survive? <laughs> Forget about the victims. Can the, can the game survive? Um, 
because there is a lot of good. They got the they got the you know the mood of the game down pretty good. They really paid attention to a lot you know the the maps and the, the you know, especially things like the family house and the gas station. You know, it looks like from the movie. Of course, with added bits that obviously you didn't see in the movie because they had to add in something for these maps, right? So they they did they did a lot of good. There's just there there are there's just a lot of bugs. There's a lot of frustration with lobbies and all this other stuff. Hit boxes on on the killers is sometimes horrible. Hitchhikers can be really horrible. And you know, a lot of, a lot of people want to say, "Oh, it's latency." And sure, some of that could be. But I mean, all the time, you know, the the lobbies crashing and ping timeouts and it just just constant stuff that's been there from the get go that's supposed to be fixed, but it isn't. So, I, I'm curious to see where they go with this because now, now the new studio is coming in to develop the game Black Tower. Because Sumo's, con- I, I'm I'm assuming Sumo's contract's finished, but I sh- I shouldn't assume anything why they left. Who knows? You know, only Gun, only Gun and Sumo, you know, probably really know the answer to that. But whatever, we don't. They're gone. Uh, Black Tower, who worked on Friday Thirteenth, is coming in to, you know, continue the game. So I'm curious to see what they do, but, you know, you can't apologize when stuff is just constantly broken and everything else. I like to have fun with the game. Solo queue, not too fun. When I play with other friends, it could be fun, but it also can be a sweat fest. So, you know, depending on who I'm playing with. So I'm trying, you know, it. I want to take it casual and enjoy the game and the atmosphere, and hopefully everybody else does. But I think that's it for now. So I, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully, uh... It gave some insight, or maybe you shared some of the same thoughts, or maybe you have different thoughts. If you do, comment below. Let's talk about it. And I'll see you all at the next one.